Understanding your shape. How many people have an idea of their shape now? You have a little idea. <laughs> Some people say, how many, of, how many of you here? This is your first service today. Let me see your hand. Your first service. Okay, so you wonder what they're talking about shape. <laughs> As they want us to go to a gym. Praise God. Well, understanding your shape, part five. Part five. We did, we did part one on Wednesday. We did part two in the first service, part three in the second service, part four in the third service. This is the last part and it's the shortest. That's why I kept it for the last service so we, we don't stay too long. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10 is a month of purpose and destiny and uh, doing everything to discover and understand our purpose. And um, one of the ways is to understand how, what, what your shape is. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10, it says, For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works which God had before ordained that we should walk in them. You are his workmanship. That is, you are God's work of art. You are God's work of art. God's crafting. God crafted you. And when he crafted you, he crafted you in a particular shape. He gave you a particular shape. One of the things we said on Wednesday, which I really want to repeat again, you are the way you are for a purpose. We said some animals run, some animals fly, some hop, some burrow, that's they dig holes in the ground, some swim, and they all have a particular role to play. And they were designed the way they are because of the role they are supposed to play. The bird has been designed with aerodynamic features. It pierces the air. Imagine a bird's front is like this. The bed will be resisted by the wind. But the bed has been designed like this. 
with this aerodynamic nature to pierce the air as it flies. The same thing with the fish and so on. Uh, and those who hop, the kangaroo, the kangaroo hops. See the hind leg is long while the other one is short like this. So that it can spring and spring and spring. And so on. There are many, many animals. The frog is designed the way it's designed to escape trouble, to hop, to fly. The deer can jump the way he runs. He can jump. Why? To escape the animals and to fulfill other purposes. Even the rat has a purpose. How many of you know the rat has a purpose? You know cockroach has purpose? What about mosquito? <laughs> and they've been designed to fulfill their purpose. Who knows the purpose of the rat? For experiments. Because every drug we use, they are tested first on rats, mostly, sometimes rabbits. I'm still finding the purpose of cockroach, but I'm sure they have a purpose somewhere there. Hallelujah. <laughs> and mosquito, they have their purpose. Hallelujah. Apart from giving us malaria to kill somebody, they have other purposes. Amen. So God has given you a shape in a particular way so that you can play your role in this world well. You were not designed or created by accident. You were intentionally created, intentionally crafted so that you can fit in. So God gave you all the necessary tools you need to fulfill your destiny, to fulfill your ministry, everything. If your nose is, is, is sharp and the hole is small, it's because you don't need too much oxygen. Oxygen is for a purpose. Maybe God also wants you to be a model. So that you use small nose. If your nose is wide and big, your work requires a lot of oxygen. And you cannot, imagine God made the nose of a horse to be small. The horse will die. Because a horse is meant to face battle and to turn back for nothing. So the nose of a horse is massive. Hallelujah. But see the nose of a dog. Not too massive. If you hold a dog's nose for long, it will just die. Because dog, dogs cannot open their, cannot breathe so well with their nose. So they open their mouth. <laughs> my dog nearly, in fact, my dog went, God resurrected it back because he was struggling. They were trying to give it inoculations or, or anti rabies or whatever. He fought, 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 fought. To, so they muzzled it. They tightened his nose. And after fighting, he passed away. So they had to resurrect it. For it to come back to life. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So we can't go into all too many uh, things that we have already done because of time. But I encourage you, media, sell the CDs. Put, put it as an MP3. That's why I decided to teach all services today. It's not funny. But God has helped me. I can't wait to get out of here right now. Praise the Lord. <laughs> you want to close early? Me, I want to close earliest. Hallelujah. <laughs> I said, I want to close now. Glory to Jesus. So we said one of the ways to understand your calling and your purpose is check your shape. And the shape there is the spelling S-H-A-P-E. S for spiritual gifting. H for your heart or your passion. A for your abilities. Your abilities and P for your personality, E for your experiences. When you look at all these five factors, they have designed you, they've molded you to a particular kind of person and it's intentional. And all we've been teaching since Wednesday, we've seen, you know, intentionality of God in the way he designed us. Let's look at personality because personality, very critical, you know, for you to understand your shape. There is a reason you are the way you are. Tell somebody there's a reason you are the way you are. There's a reason why you don't talk. There's a reason why you, 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 why, you, why, you, why you are this way or that way. There is something about your DNA and your makeup that makes you the way you are and all these were designed by God to help you fit into your purpose. There's something about your DNA that gives you certain features and characteristics just to help you fit into your purpose. Okay? This is why your mother and your father had to be the one. Because they had some DNA features that are supposed to contribute to you. To make you the person God wants you to be. It is all because God loves variety. Some say God loves variety. We will all not be the same no matter how hard you try. That's why even in a child, God said, train up a child in the way he should go. And when he's old, you will not depart from him. Proverbs 22 verse 6. 
when you read it from the Amplified Version, it says, train up a child in keeping with his peculiar bent. Everybody already has a bent. Look at it. Train up a child in the way he should go and in keeping with his individual gifting or bent. There is a bent, a bias. There is a way the child goes and when he is old, he will not depart from it. That's what the Bible says. Hallelujah. So God has made all kinds of, all kinds of people. We have been created with unique set of varieties and personalities. So God made extroverts. Who are extroverts? That's a kind of personality. People who like to go out, they're very boisterous. You know, they just say, how are you? Everybody's a friend. Those are extroverts. And all of, all of us are not extroverts. So God also made introverts. People who like to stay indoors. They just like to stay indoors. They don't want to go out. He made introverts too. Very quiet people. That's a personality type. God also made quiet people. Then he made loud people. People that are just loud. Anna, if they're in your compound, you know when they're around. When they're not around, everybody will miss them. Because the whole place is quiet. Where is this man? Is he not around? He's not around. As he's back from the outside of the defense, you are hearing him. Anna, I travel. I just come back. Is this Satan that made him that way? No, God made him that way. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, God made some people to be primarily thinkers. They think, think, think more. Then while he made some others to be feelers. They feel. They just feel. God made all these people. These are different varieties of people. So, some people walk best alone. They like to walk alone. They don't like... Bleh, 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 bleh. There are those who can't walk alone. They must walk in a team. They must walk in a team. They can't walk except there is a team. There are two, two or three people are gathered together. But there are those who walk alone. You see some American movies, detective movies, when, when a, where an actor will say, I don't, please, I like to walk alone. You know, because they are very erratic. They don't like to consult anybody, consult any team. Let's see 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 6 from the Amplified Bible. As we wrap up, we have to wrap up in Jesus' name. Amen. It says, and when we were among, huh? are you sure? 12 verse 6, oh, mind yourself, it's 2 verse 6. 12 verse 6. And there is, and there are distinctive varieties of operation, of working to accomplish things. Distinctive. But it is the same God who inspires and energizes them all in all. So all these days, no right or wrong personality to do ministry. All personalities are right for ministry. They are good for ministry to achieve balance in the church. To achieve what? Balance in the church. So the church can be balanced. The work of God can be balanced. Somebody shout hallelujah. Let's look at some personalities in the Bible who have certain uh, first, okay, let's look at the four different kinds of personalities or temperament types. Number one is sanguine. You, I've told you about sanguine before now. Who are sanguines? Outgo they are extroverts. Outgoing people, they are loud, they're very friendly, everybody's their friend, and so on. Then choleric people. Some of you who will marry, you are not learning it. Then you, when I ask you to come and discuss temperament of someone you want to marry. You start to speak English. I asked one, say, what's the temperament of this person? He said, ah, this one is uh, phlegmatic. I said, how do you know? He said, like the other day, like the other day. I said, what is the other day? <laughs> what did you read? Tell me from what you read, what's the temperament? He said, I said, okay, go. You go and do it, you'll come back. I tell you, read this, I've read. I asked you, say, like the other day, when she came, she came, she came. See your head like she came. Praise God. <laughs> Collect people have go get us. Very serious minded. Very, hmm? they are very, you understand? <laughs> they don't look back. They don't, they don't care what, what, how, what harm they do you to get the thing done. They are project driven and less people sensitive. You understand know what I'm saying? Wild sanguine people are people sensitive and less project driven. A, a sanguine person will shut down a project if people are going to get offended. 
but a project, a project, a, a choleric person will push the project no matter who is offended. In fact, if, 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 please, I'm not sentimental here. I think about get out. There are many things to them. Then there's the, there's the, there's the, there's the melancholic people, easily depressed. But they are very perfect. They are very, they are very, um, you know, organized, very aesthetic. They are very, you know, uh, they are good planners, very analytic. They like, they like excellence. They like, mm, 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 mm. for that reason, even in small things, spoil, they get depressed. They are self-persecutory. They are hardly satisfied with their work. Talk less of your own. <laughs> they will criticize anything. So, they are very critical. They, are, they, have, they have mood swings. The mood can... Today they are happy. Ah, next thing. What happened? I don't know. <laughs> Call them stupid. Hey! That's three months. Three months. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Then you have phlegmatic. Very nice people. Very easygoing. They don't look for trouble. They are not confrontational. Offend them, they will not say anything. They, they will forgive you privately. They, are, they, they just like peace. They are very, but they, have, they can be laid back. Tell them, do this, they say, I go do. But they won't do. Do it, I will do. So they are quietly stubborn and they are very, you know what I'm talking about? But if you push them, they will do that thing more than a choleric person. Just that they don't easily believe in themselves. So they, they always need a little push and so on and so forth. Do you know all those people are in the Bible? All those people are in the Bible. If you check the Bible, you see all those temperaments. For instance, who was Peter? He was a sanguine. Whether he knows what he's saying, he doesn't know what he's saying, he will say it. Someone just woke up from sleep. He said, Master, let's build three tabernacles. You have not even known what is happening. <laughs> Some people will talk before they start thinking. Let's be three tabernacle. For it's not good for us to leave this place. The Bible says he knew not what he said. He didn't know what he was saying. You understand what I'm saying? Jesus is washing people's feet. He said, Master, you can never wash my feet. You can never lie like wash my feet. Jesus said, if I don't wash you, you have no part in me. And when he finished talking, he said, hey, wash my head also. <laughs> Uncle Pito. Jesus said, Jesus said, Jesus said, you know, um, Jesus made sure Peter didn't know who was going to betray him. But John knew. John was a phlegmatic person. Phlegmatic, quiet. Jesus trusted him that this guy can keep secret. Because when they tell him, ask, ask him who now? Eh? So he asked master who? He said, he that dipped his hand with me. So he knew he was, he was Judas. But but John is a man, he's an apostle of love. He's an apostle of love. When you are loving, Jesus will share secrets with you because you won't kill people. Imagine if they told Peter, who was already holding a knife. <laughs> that Judas <laughs> Judas would have died. He sees. This thing that Peter has been, this thing has made Peter rebuke Jesus. Jesus told him, get behind me, Satan. So Judas, you are the one. My have seen that word. <laughs> Is somebody here I'm saying? <laughs> so Peter, hey, say Peter, eh, eh, when I told you to go, uh, to go without pause or skip, did you lack anything? Nothing. He said, now you have to do this. Keep your sword. Somebody said, master, we have sword here. He said, it's enough. That was Peter. So they came to arrest. Peter, hey, before you know it, the broad knife removed somebody's ear. So Peter, very boisterous, very uh, talk and all that. Hallelujah. Who wants to know the temperament of uh, um, uh, the temperament of Philip? <laughs> Philip. It's like his name doesn't show up much, so you easily forget. How, how do we have bread to feed this multitude? What did Philip begin to do immediately? So, and, so who, who is that? That's a melancholic person. 
He started analyzing 200 penny what? He has already calculated. How do you know what is in the post? 200 penny what is not enough to do that. So melancholy people can be very skeptical because they want everything to be perfect. You don't tell them to go and move when you have not al- arranged everything. The transfer money must be complete. Everything complete. That's why I say 200 penny what? It's not enough. Send them away. Jesus. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> Jesus had all these people. Beyond the disciples of Jesus, let's look at someone like Paul. Who was Paul? Highly choleric. He doesn't care who story he steps on. He doesn't know whether you are Peter, the chief this disciple. He will rebuke you in the public. He said, Peter, you are wrong. Why are you, this, why are you deceiving and confusing everybody here? Eh? That will be in a Jew. Are you saying, huh? Peter had to humble himself. Because Paul, highly choleric. Talk to anybody, anyhow, anywhere. Anytime I read that prayer, I say, Paul, did you have to do it publicly? He said, I confronted him to his face. Because he was wrong. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's find somebody. Who was Jeremiah? Jeremiah the prophet. He was what? Ifle. He couldn't have been choleric. Jeremiah, cause be the day I was born. Oh Lord, thou hast deceived me. That's a melancholic person. Easily depressed, want to die, and so on and so forth. So there is nothing wrong with any temperament. There's no, just that you need to avoid the extremes of the temperament. Listen, every temperament has the strengths and weaknesses. The strengths manifest when you are close to God. The weaknesses manifest when you are spiritually weak. The weaknesses are actually the works of the flesh. Go and check it. The, weak, the works of the flesh. The strengths are the fruit of the spirit. Praise the name of the Lord. Very, I've given somebody expo. Who is going to marry soon? Somebody shout hallelujah. So your personality will affect where and how you use your spiritual gifts and ability. Your personality will affect where you use your spiritual gift and how. Somebody who is a quiet, melancholic, maybe phlegmatic person who doesn't lack loud things and so on can never be in a church where the pastor preaches. And God says, and so God, somebody say, say, God. The person is saying, why is the pastor shouting? We are hearing. <laughs> that person will not survive in that church. He can't use his gift in that church. He will have so that's why you see people with different churches. You are in the church you are because it suits your personality type in a certain way. Somebody shout hallelujah. Two evangelists will not do outreach the same way. But they are evangelists, quiet evangelists. Loud evangelists, but they will not do it the same way because God lost variety. How many of you know a man they call Pastor Tony Rappo? Tony Rappo. He's a medical doctor, do you know? And the man is a medical doctor. They never call him doctor. That man, do you think he's just a pastor? He's an evangelist. But he's not the shouting type. He is very effective in outreach. He reaches the poorest of the poor. It seems to me like a melancholic person like that. It's not a choleric nor a sanguine. It's somewhere there. But his outreaches are powerful. He goes to the inner cities. Where if you go, you will go and preach. Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you. Pastor Tony will go with his short sleeve shirt. Jesus loves you. He wants to help you. He will do anything to come for you. Someone like me, I say, why is he wasting this crowd? Give it to them. Somebody shout, yeah. Shout, yeah. Mm. Are you getting... So... Imagine the places he goes to, area boys, drug addicts, warlords, all kinds. You go there and he's shouting. They can get angry. You want to fight? You want to fight? 
Over by Aja. As you are shouting, they are shouting. I fall here. I break your head. But can you confuse his intention the way he's talking? Lie, lie. He wants to go to some place, the village head. The paramoral will say, Don't go there, they will kill you. He will go there. All those people, prostitution gangs have ended because he went to some places. Pimps have lost jobs with his quiet personality. Never underestimate anybody because they look gentle. They are as if they won't do it like you, but they will do the same job. They'll get the job done. Somebody shout hallelujah. A church ought to have all those kind of people. So never at any time try to mimic anybody. When you mimic anybody, you become a fake. Be an original. How are you an original? Find out your uniqueness. Find out exactly who you are. When you try to mimic anybody or do it like anybody, you require extra effort. You will be stressed. You will not be fulfilled. There was a time I want to preach like T.D. Jakes. Even to read Bible, I'm shouting. Just, I was in the book of Amos. What is it? <laughs> and the Bible says, can two walk together and say they be agreed? Say it, agreed. Say one more time, agreed. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm trying to tell you the time. My back started paining me. <laughs> says, one time I told my wife, climb my back. She climbed. I said, go down, go down, go down. Said, no, move right, move right. <laughs> there, press it. Because my back started paining me. One day the Holy Ghost asked me, watch TD Jakes again. I watched. He said, even the reading Bible is not shouting. See, throughout the message, he only shouted towards the end. You shout from reading of Bible. <laughs> so, and I told myself, ask myself, who am I, myself? Who am I? What's my personality? I said, they're flowing with my personality. So, I can talk gentle, 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 and people are still blessed. I said, I've seen some people in church say, I like pastor, please. I just like, I don't know why are they shouting. I go to places they are shouting. And when we are hearing, and they are still shouting. There are people like that. They will never go to church to church. Because they are shouting at them. They feel offended. <laughs> what have we done? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Tell somebody, be yourself. You know why? The people meant for you will look for you. My sheep hear my voice. So when you stay yourself... The right people will be attracted to you. Hallelujah. So it feels good and it feels great to minister and to serve in a manner consistent with your personality. In a manner consistent with your personality. Listen, that they say you, sh you don't have to shout doesn't mean you have to be ineffective. You are not shouting, but when you open your mouth, bullet is dropping. Boy, boy, but you're not shouting. Okay? The man is shouting. Sometimes may not have much substance. Sometimes when you are very anointed, you don't feel like shouting. Because the anointing keeps you calm. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. When you, when you operate in your mold, in your shape, you will experience fulfillment, number one. You'll be very, very fulfilled. That work, you are, you'll be so happy with it. Number two, you'll experience satisfaction. You'll experience satisfaction. You'll be satisfied. Whenever I leave here, church or singles, friend talk or fresh wine for couples, when I go, I'm very fulfilled. I'm very satisfied. So I don't even feel like eating because I'm so full. It's called fulfillment. And finally, when you're operating your, within the ranges of your personality, you will experience fruitfulness. You will be productive. You will be fruitful. You will enjoy yourself. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Avoid the temptation of copycatting, of mimicking, of trying to do it like others. Do it like yourself. Because there will never be another you except you. If you do somebody else, who will do you? The world will be missing you. Are you get what I'm saying? Be the best you you can ever be, but never depart from who you are. Stay within the ranges of who you are. Let's stand to our feet. 
Are you clapping for the powerfulness of the message or the shortness of the time? Or both? <laughs> Father, we love you. We worship and adore you. Glorify.
that is possibly medically impossible I stand on behalf of God and I declare it cancelled in the name of Jesus then the mindo kotoya reketepete. I declare today, wherever they put a stop, I command it to be unstopped in the name of Jesus. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. Anything about your life, your character that you felt cannot be changed, I command it to change. Who saith and it cometh to pass when the Lord has not commanded? For who has believed our report? And unto whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For surely he has borne our disease. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we were healed. You are not about to be healed, you have been healed. I decree right now, wherever you are, whoever you are, whatever affliction on your body, I command it to die. Terminated right now in the name of Jesus. For in upon Mount Zion there shall be deliverance, there shall be holiness, and the house of Jacob shall possess their possession. Possess your possession right now. Possess your possession right now in Jesus name to cease. I command affliction to cease. What is affliction? Anything that has stayed for too long is an affliction. Anything that has stayed for too long is an affliction. I command it to stop now. Cease in the name of Jesus. Cease in the name of Jesus. Cease in the name of Jesus. You will sleep and wake up and you will not find that affliction. It would have left your body forever. By the mercy of God, I command you free. I declare you free. The Lord is showing me some ladies here. There are things in your life you can't even share. But God sees you. He knows it. Today, I command that story to end. That chapter of your life closes right now. I command that thing to go. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. My soul, God magnify the Lord. And my spirit. without pain you will live without anything wrong in your body come into that season in the name of Jesus I feel like praying for somebody that needs to make Jesus their Lord and Savior you need to give your life to Jesus you need to be born again you need to make peace with God quickly I want to pray for you wherever you are pastor I'm not sure of heaven please pray for me I don't want to make go go to hell pray for me I want to have a relationship with God if you belong to any of those categories pray this prayer with me Lord Jesus thank you for dying for me I accept your sacrifice come into my life be my Lord and Savior 
wash me with your blood I receive you today and I vow that I will serve you for the rest of my life in Jesus name amen and amen hallelujah you prayed the prayer let me see your hand you just prayed that prayer with me now let me see that hand let me see that hand anybody like that anybody like that hallelujah hallelujah so I'm hearing songs in my spirit somebody you're about to break into singing